last part of chapter three. So we're gonna finish up with nutrient cycles. Last time we went over a lot of words and vocab. Let's add some pictures today to make it a little bit more fun so it's not so, well, dry. So let's first start with nutrient cycles, what they are. Remember, nutrients is what all organisms need in order to survive, whether that, are, that would be our ions, our gases, our macromolecules. So last time we went over all of that content stuff. Now let's kind of tie into where this nutrients comes from. So nutrients, right? Where does all of the nutrient come from? So we have to think they come from food webs. So like throughout the food web and food chain, it's being cycled. Also, it's going to come from land, so the atmosphere. And of course, when we think about where all the nutrients is coming from, if it's coming from the land, it's coming from food webs, it's also going to be used by you know, food webs. So when we look at our understanding, there is a reservoir of nutrients, which means like it's continuous, just like the water cycle, right? The water cycle, whatever water we have on planet Earth today, that's what we're going to have tomorrow, the next day. It's a continuous cycle. So it's the same thing with nutrients. Nutrients are available for us as consumers, but also to the as the producers, right? So we think of the producers, they're going to take in a lot of the nutrients and then cycle it through a food web. And of course, a food web is made of all of the different food chains. Now, some nutrients are going to be soluble, meaning they can be broken down. There is a reservoir of these dissolved nutrients in the ocean, which is available for the producers and consumers to use, whether it's available through the food web or it's available through upwelling from the bottom of the ocean up. So where does nutrients really come from? Well, it's replenished, which means it's given back to our system or our cycles through upwelling tectonic plate activity, hello, chapter two, runoff, excretion, de deposition, and dissolving of gases. Now, how is it depleted? Well, when photosynthesis is using carbon dioxide, that's depleting some nutrients. Loss of nutrients in a food chain, we actually don't eat every part of an organism. Many organisms do not eat every part of their food. They may leave some behind, which means that's going to be la a lack of nutrients that's cycled back in because we're not using it, right? Feces, so any sort of sinking feces, that's also going to deplete nutrients. Detrius organic material depletes nutrients. It's incorporated to coral reefs, so coral reefs are actually part of our food chain and food web system. Also harvesting, so the word depleted means removed, right? So when we harvest, us humans, when we go fishing and we take fish out of the ocean, we are depleting nutrients from the ocean. Now, nitrogen gas is fixed by blue-green algae, which just means that it's changed into a usable form. So the word fixed just means changed into a usable form. Now, productivity can be limited because of the nutrients that's dissolved and available. So limited just means that we can reach a plateau. So productivity may reach a plateau because of the available dissolved nutrients. The carbon cycle. So lots of pictures here with the carbon cycle. So first, the carbon cycle is going to be where we have adding and removing of carbon dioxide for the most part, but we're gonna focus on carbon. So how can carbon be added to a food web, the food chains, the ocean, and of course, so that it can be used? So when we think about the carbon cycle, we're going to have to think of how can carbon be added and how can it be removed. So first, the first thing that you're going to think about is photosynthesis, because we've talked about it so many times, especially in this chapter, and we're going to continue to talk about it. So photosynthesis is going to use carbon dioxide. If something is using carbon, that means it's removing carbon. So photosynthesis removes it. What does respiration do? 
respiration when we breathe out, it's going to add carbon dioxide. So those two are nice, they go hand in hand. Now, what else is going to change or increase or decrease the amount of carbon? We have combustion. Combustion is going to add carbon. Deposition, add carbon. Formation of fossil fuels adds carbon. Formation and weathering. So when we have weathering of rocks, they have carbonate in them. When we have weathering, remember, weathering is breakdown. That's from chapter two. So when rocks break down, they are releasing carbon into the atmosphere. So the primary, primary use of carbon is photosynthesis. And then, of course, that glucose that is produced in photosynthesis will be used by other organisms and cycled throughout all of the different food chains. So the carbon cycle is really important to understand. So make sure you remember the first two that are the easiest. Photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide, so it's using carbon. And then, of course, cellular respiration is releasing carbon dioxide, so it's adding carbon dioxide. So that's carbon. So it's going to be our easiest two examples of the adding and removing of carbon in our food webs and food chains to help the carbon. Remember, as always, if you liked this video, go ahead, like, and subscribe, and we'll continue on to chapter four in our next video. See you guys.